Hi, it's Dr. James Johnson, also known as the Floater Doctor. I have to say it's been a long time since I've done one of these treatment videos, and I get a lot of uh, positive uh, reviews from them, and people really like to see them. So i am put together a, a little video, and it's been a while because I'm trying to figure out how to do this picture-in-picture picture and how to, how to coordinate it with the videos, but we'll see how this works out. But anyways, what I have displayed here are, uh, are two images here. The one above is a cross-section of kind of the energy profile of the YAG laser. Now, some people will say, well, gee, you know, lasers are great, but what happens if you miss your target? And this is where the ophthalmic YAG laser really quite differs from your typical laser, laser pointer, uh, military, industrial applications, things like that, in that it has a cone-shaped pattern to it. So up here you can see where that energy comes together, and the energy is really only delivered at one point in space. And then over here uh, is another kind of oblique uh, schematic of the same thing. But essentially, the, the energy is only delivered where that cone comes together there, not in front of it, not behind it. And so uh, there's still responsibility, of course. I need to know where that's focused, and I need to make sure that that stays uh, safely away from the retina and safely away from the lens. And that's where experience comes in. I've been treating eye floaters exclusively in my practice for almost 15 years now. Uh, and uh, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 million individually aimed and fired shots of the laser. Uh, it's a lot of experience. And you also have to be careful, you know, if you, uh, if you go online, you might find that your local doctor or doctor in your local area uh, claims to be treating floaters. If you go to their website and there's just a paragraph, a kind of cut and paste, uh, kind of generic bullet point uh, 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 affirmation that they treat floaters, be a, little bit, be a little bit wary. You know, this is not something you want to just sort of dabble with. Uh, it really takes a good 10,000 hours of Malcolm Gladwellian type of focused practice to get good at something whatever skill that is, a musical instrument, uh, you know, surgery in this case, uh, really pays to, to put in the, the time to get there. So um, so that's kind of the intro. Uh, what you're going to see is a patient of mine who I had previously treated back in 2018 for his left eye. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I thought maybe it's going to be very difficult. Maybe I'm not going to be able to see the floaters. Maybe it's just a, a difficult type of floater to treat. Uh, and what showed up is what you'll see in just a moment here, which is you know just a classic Weiss ring floater in the front half of the eye, which means closer to me, further away from the retina. It's really, I'd say, really an ideal floater to treat. So what you'll see is kind of a ratty, irregular, it's truly a Weiss ring as part of a posterior vitreous detachment. And it's a very treatable floater. You know, nice big pupil, great optics to work through. And as you watch me fire with the laser, you can see uh, bubbles come off this as it's being vaporized and destroyed. And you can just watch that floater get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, the video will be broken up into two segments, kind of that first treatment, and then I'll do a brief uh, sort of the, the next day when he showed up, um, kind of a, a, a view of what I, uh, what I see. The one, one thing, I, I talk about these Weiss rings all the time. I don't get them nearly as much as I like to. I talk about them a lot. Uh, and that's because they are the most efficient to treat, they are the most definitive to treat, you destroy them, they don't come back, they don't cause eye pressure issues. Um, they're really a joy to see uh, walk into the door. So I was, I was glad to see uh, uh, Dave walk in the door with this. So uh, we'll cut to the treatment video and I'll do some uh, voiceover or video over uh, narration to, um, to kind of talk you through it and hope you enjoy it. Uh, as always, Google and YouTube are sort of looking at activity of videos and, and channels and all that kind of stuff. So if you like what you see and you're learning a little something about the treatment of floaters, um, you know, smash that like button uh, and that helps with the algorithm. So that, of course, it helps me, but it will help other people find me and uh, hopefully uh, they might be able to have their floaters treated, whereas they've been told by most everyone else that nothing can be done. Well, you know what? I'm doing it. I've been doing this for a long time and I've helped a lot of people. So hopefully this is helpful to you. And uh, if you are especially over the age of uh, 45, 50 or so with some prominent and dominant floaters that have come on uh, and you have been told nothing can be done, mm, we'll see about that. Uh, if you can make your way to the Dallas-Fort Worth area in North Texas, uh, that's where I am now. Sorry to my past California patients. Um, and I'd be glad to evaluate you and see if you're a candidate. Not everybody is. Um, but most of the older age group are. So anyways, enjoy the video. So we've got Dave, who comes to me with a pretty prominent floater. There, it's kind of hiding from me. There it is. So let's get it to move a little bit. We 
that into better view. Look down for just a moment, and then back to light there. And we should see it come down. So we've got a beautiful Weiss ring. Gorgeous. Uh, with some little attached little tails, and you can kind of see that, that plasticky membrane kind of folded over on itself. And then as I kind of jog those uh, red beams back and forth, you'll see the focus. And that should balance it around a little bit. It does move a bit, so we'll be doing some manipulation of location and giving it a better location. But we got a nice big pupil, nice clear lens, so the optics are, are just dandy. Can't complain about that. Uh, it's a pretty big Weiss ring, though. I mean, it's actually kind of Weiss ring plus, Weiss ring value added. So there's a little bit more to go after here. But as I hit that, you'll see it sort of jerk around a little bit, and you'll see a little, little cluster of 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, little bubbles come off it as they kind of drift up there. And those bubbles will go away pretty quickly. They'll just dissolve. So let's bring this uh, forward again, look down again, back to light there. That brings it up and a little closer to me so that the energy is better. Get that to tumble on itself. You start to see it get kind of disorganized as it starts to break up here. This uh, is the type of floater I like to see walk in the door. I talk about Weiss rings all the time. They are my favorite by far. The reason is they're very distinct. When you look in there, you're like, yep, that's it. That's very clearly, that's what I need to get after. Um, they are really, there's not a lot of volume to them, even though they can appear quite big to the patient. Uh, and they absorb the laser energy quite well. So they are very much more efficiently treated than some of the cloudier floaters that I get mostly. a lot of these sort of what I call plasticky sheet-like membranes. That's part of the whole vitreous complex coming off the back there. It's like, a, like literally like a baggie or a sack that contains the vitreous. So when it comes off and it's kind of folded over on itself, that, that affects the vision as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as distinct as, a, as the main floater, but um, collaterally, if I can kind of clean that up, that will hopefully overall brighten and uh, get rid of some of those distracting sort of plasticky membranes that you that you're aware of too. That's just part of the PVD. Okay, let's bring it forward again. Look down. Back to light again. And there it is. The size of that fl main floater complex is, uh, I want to say, probably about two to three millimeters or so, which, you know, if you look at a ruler, it's not very big. Um, but the spot size of the energy is only like uh, eight or nine thousandths of a millimeter, so I have a relatively small spot of energy trying to break up a uh, relatively large mass, and that's why I have to... So if you're a little confused as to what we're actually looking at, what you're seeing is my view looking in through the biomicroscope. I have a camera beam splitter set up, so uh, through one of the eye's sights, the, the vision uh, is being diverted over through a partial thickness mirror to a camera, which is recording. So we're looking in directly through the dilated pupil into this section of the eye. The floater that you're seeing is located, and we're gonna say right about something about like this. You're seeing some of that uh, plasticky membrane. You've got your Y string right here. So it's, it's in the front half of the eye, which makes my view a lot better. It makes the energy delivery a lot better. And it's also safe, you know, plenty far away from the retina, plenty far away from the lens. And so the white creamy thing that you're seeing, uh, cream colored thing, is the actual floater, 
we're on the reflective side of it, whereas you might see your floaters as darker and shadowy. Well, that makes sense. It's like saying, is the moon bright or is it dark? Well, it depends on what side of the moon you're on. I'm on the reflective side, you're seeing the shadows as those shadows are being cast onto the retina back there. So with every, uh, and, and the energy coming into the laser is something about like this. And so I'm aiming that laser right on the front there. If you see these two little red beams, the red beams are running along the top and the bottom of that cone. And where those two red beams coincide, that's exactly where the laser energy is going to be delivered. And that's one of three or four different overlapping mechanisms, optical mechanisms that uh, tell me where I'm located. Uh, that in a lot of experience. So um, what you'll see is when I, when I fire the laser, uh, you're seeing some bubbles floating up, floating up there, and that's a little piece of that floater being chipped away, a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit as it goes through. And as you watch the progression of this, that floater will be broken up and broken up and just get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what we're watching right now. Just took a look in there a moment ago, and I have to say it looks pretty darn good. There, we might do some cleanup. There's, there's always something. I can always find something. But uh, um, he also had a you know, large floater in the other eye. It just took two and a half years for this eye to catch up, which is not unusual. I mean, both eyes are about the same age, been exposed to the same things, you know, both you know, nearsighted or whatever the risk factors are. So, um, just took a little while to catch up. There's the sort of typical little small leftover little fragment. And kind of pick out a little bit. You can bump up the magnification. These little bits and pieces are very, very small. Tenth of, a tenth of a millimeter, twentieth of a millimeter maybe. Some of these are so small that uh, Dave won't even see them because the, remember, we don't see the floaters, we see the shadows. And if, there's, if the floaters are small enough, um, it just may not even cast a shadow, a shadow long enough to be seen. Um, or there might be some variability where in bright light with a small pupil, he might see a little bit more. So it's pretty in carrier, he's probably not going to see that. Um, but with a smaller pupil where the shadows are cast longer. And so um, if I haven't already, I'm going to uh, offer David here a chance to try out those atropine drops um, that are kind of geared more for the younger patient who is not really a candidate for treatment with the laser or really a candidate for treatment with anything. But on the other hand, um, the same optics apply uh, by the same token by mildly dilating the pupil uh, some of this You know this little residual stuff that some of it I'm not even seeing but some of the small little fle flecks and fragments that he might still maybe be able to see um, Having that pupil mildly dilated may be something he could use occasionally if it's uh, maybe just on the weekend going mountain biking or going hiking or maybe it's, he's a He's a pastor and public speaker the two go hand in hand of course and so looking down at your notes and then looking up and having things kind of swirl around in there, there might be just maybe just one day a week when he might want to uh, get a little bit of relief from that, from the distraction. So it's nice to have a little something to augment the laser treatment as well. Okay, so there's a little bit more treatment, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, as you can tell, compared to what we started off with, there's just a couple of small little flecks and specks uh, to, to do some cleanup there. And, uh, you know, I, I seem to spend a lot of my time with the laser just cleaning up those last little bits and last little bits. I'm pretty obsessive about it, and I'm not satisfied until I can get pretty much everything I possibly can. And uh, so uh, the patient was very satisfied with the results. I was very satisfied with, with the results. And what I was just talking about with the atropine drops, if you're not aware, uh, it's on my website. I have some videos on that. But I'm now offering um, a telemedicine consultation. It was kind of geared for the younger people, as I mentioned, but uh, it's a pharmaceutical that uh, requires first a doctor-patient relationship. That's why I do the telemedicine con consultations first. Uh, and that is a, uh, a diluted version of, of a dilating drop that, that dilates the pupils, not huge, but just a small little bit. And that uh, allows a little bit more light into the eye uh, without completely overwhelming it. And it diminishes the shadows that are cast onto the retina. So what I was suggesting with Dave there was uh, some of these small little flecks and bits that I may not be able to get, they might still be present. Uh, his, overall, his situation would be a lot, lot better. 
Um, but the use of the atropine drops might just give them a little bit of a break for some of the residual uh, background noise that, that sometimes still exists. And remember, the end point of a treatment is not perfection. You never really get perfection, except with a surgical procedure, the vitrectomy, a lot more invasive, a lot more risk, a lot more problems. So uh, the end point with the laser treatment is not perfection, but a lot, lot better. Now that means different things to different people, but a lot, lot better. And in this case, uh, uh, Dave had a very treatable floater. He walked in with what I want to see, which is a white screen floater in a good position, good optics, big dilated pupil, and it responded really, really nicely. So uh, I was satisfied, he was satisfied, and uh, I think we're pretty much done with him since he only has two eyes. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something. And uh, you know, ultimately, everybody's different. Uh, every eye is different. And uh, some people are more treatable than others. Some are not candidates for treatment. It ultimately takes an in-person evaluation. Um, if you know me from before, I used to be located in Southern California. I'm now in North Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where I've moved permanently. Um, I'm keeping my California license, but for right now, I'm in Texas full time. Uh, if you'd like to come and see me, you can set up an appointment online and uh, come out and see me and we'll, let's, let's get you dilated and let's find out what's going on in there. Okay? Anyways, thanks for watching. I know it's a long one. They always are. Uh, but hope you learned a little something. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.